We're here this morning in our first full day in Alaska at the most wonderful place in the entire world for me. It's Tracy Arm and it's a glacial fjord. And what I mean by that is it's a glacially carved valley that's flooded by the sea. And we're in here really nice and close. You can see some of the ice behind me. It is gorgeous. And the reason I like this place so much, it's like a float trip in Yosemite Valley. You've got towering, sheer, vertical walls all around made out of granite. And it's about a mile wide. It's about 28 miles long. A tidewater glacier is a glacier that comes from the high mountains all the way down to sea level, which is where we are right here. So this is salt water. It's influenced by all the fresh water, the melting, all the waterfalls, the snow that's around, everything is melting. So it decreases the normal seawater salinity. And here we have what are called brackish conditions, meaning a mixture of salt and fresh water. So it's still salt water. You still have marine algae growing around on the low tide areas, but it does have a freshwater influence. Eventually they mix, creating that brackish water conditions. My name is Brian. I'm the chief mate here on the Sea Lion. This is uh, the bridge. This is where I spend a lot of my days, you know, navigating us through uh, all these fun little inside passages. We're going to be traveling through southeast Alaska this week, starting in Juneau, making our way south to a few different spots, hopefully get out and explore the wilderness that southeast has to offer, um, tuck into a few really neat little places and see what kind of wildlife we can find along the way. You never know what we're going to see, so that's always part of the, the excitement is the unknowns and the unexpecteds. The Sea Lion's a great, great small little ship, really nimble and allows us to get into a lot of really unique places that the bigger ships can't always get into. This morning we got to enjoy one of the coolest wildlife experiences in the world, in my opinion. We got to experience humpback whales, cooperative bubble net feeding. Now what is that? They work as a group. This is a group of unrelated individuals. They gather here in Southeast Alaska every summer and they work together to eat herring. It's incredible. We saw a group of nearly 20 whales one of the whales is blowing bubbles underwater. One of them is screaming, which scares the fish. And we're listening to it on our hydrophone. They all gather up, they rush to the surface, and they feast on these fish. They lunge out of the water, mouths open, body parts sticking up, and herring are flying everywhere. It is incredible. So these whales have perfected this technique and they're doing it fairly shallow, somewhere between 50 and 150 feet deep. Sometimes they're very, very close to shore. So they're not out in the open deep channels. Sometimes they're right against the shore and it makes for this dramatic experience to see these whales rushing up with trees and a beautiful background. After they do the bubble netting, they're all breathing at the surface. They're recharging their oxygen. Then they need to go back down deep. They want to get back down below the fish so they lift that tail high, and that's signaling a deeper dive, and down they go. We had some incredible close views. We were able to look right into their mouths. We could see the baleen, the brush-like plates hanging from the upper jaw. We could see the top of the inside of their mouth pink. We could see the fish going into the mouth, fish escaping. So incredible. As we watched them, they'd all take a number of breaths, and then one tail up after another, after another. Each underside of a tail is just like your fingerprint. 
You can identify them to individuals. We know who these whales are. We've been watching them year after year. There they go, one after another. Down they go, over and over. One of certainly the coolest wildlife experiences in the world. I started flying 32 years ago. We've been flying 30 years commercial here, and it's just exciting to go fly around the glaciers and look at um, everything and watch it constantly change, really. I didn't originally sign up for flight sync, and I am so glad that I did it because it was certainly one of the highlights of the trip. The plane flew so close, it was like you could reach out and touch them and you could see all of the colors all at once and you could see this incredible perspective. Today we had the awesome opportunity to go to Pavlov to see the bears feeding in the stream. We were able to see at least four individuals. Some of us hiked out a little bit sooner, but we had a mama bear and her cub, and we had two juveniles who their behavior showed that they probably were just weaned from the mom this season, and they were a little hesitant to go deeper into the falls when the adults were there. We have two different types of bears here in Southeast Alaska. We have brown bears, which are also considered grizzly, and we also have black bears. And the ones that we saw at Pavlov were the coastal browns, which are omnivores. They're going to be digging the roots, and they use their really sharp claws in the front to really be really good diggers. That's also on the back. They have a big hump of muscle that's just used uh, just to kind of forage for food. We saw them eating the salmon coming upstream, but there was also evidence of them on the tidal plains with the mussels and eating some of the vegetation there as well. Hi, I'm Terry Bienes. I was the skipper today on one of the excursions for the sea lion. We went up the Stikine River. You could see a bunch of Pacific Harbor seal, and a few bald eagles, some immature ones as well as mature ones. We had a couple hour excursion that we were able to hit some of the back flues. And then we went up into the glacier and saw icebergs as well as the fa face of the glacier. Wrangell was a, the gateway to the Stikin for the gold miners headed up to the Kaziar. There used to be a lot more traffic on the river as they, with the big paddle wheelers going up to Telegraph with the supplies and they would also, that's how vehicles got here before the freighters and stuff started coming in and the weekly barge service which you have out here now. 